vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence my light. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou are only first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou Tonight, please open your Bible to a very, very familiar couple of verses in the book of Psalm. Psalm 71, please. Psalm 71. I was looking through some notes I had, and I believe it was uh, two or three years ago on this same Sunday night before Vacation Bible School. I brought a message from the same exact text. The message will be a little different, uh, but the text will be the same in Psalm chapter 71. Uh, tomorrow begins Vacation Bible School. And I'm often reminded that we of a church uh, of our responsibility, uh, not just to the kids of our church, but to the kids of our community. And uh, we have a responsibility to, to reach them and to teach them. And uh, the reason we have Vacation Bible School is not, is not to show off Brother Marty's new uh, magic tricks. However, Brother Marty, when you pass away, please leave me your peanut butter and jelly Magic trick, okay? Because that is the coolest thing ever. If you've not seen it before, he does this, and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich appears in a bag. It's amazing. It's one of the greatest uh, mysteries of the world, and probably everybody knows how to do it but me, but it's an awesome, awesome trick. And uh, listen, if you only come just to see that, it'll be worth your trip to Vacation Bible School. Uh, but we don't have Vacation Bible School just to show off his tricks. Uh, we don't have vacation Bible school because, because we have so much spare time that we're just going to spend uh, half a day, Monday through Thursday, working vacation Bible school. That's not the reason. We have vacation Bible school because as a church right here at 42 and Valley Hill Road, we have responsibility to teach and reach the children both of our church and our community for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think about Psalm 71. And I, and I believe David, David has the same attitude as, as what I just mentioned. Look, please, in verse number 17. Psalm 71, verse 17. David says, O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to every one that is to come. I want to preach tonight with the Lord's help a very basic message entitled this, Children are Teachable and Reachable. Children are Teachable and Reachable. Tonight, Lord, as we prepare for many things this week, Vacation Bible School, uh, Lord's Supper tonight, God, I pray now you may just speak to our hearts tonight, God, and cleanse us from any 
thing that may be displeasing to you, God, as we focus on uh, the events of the coming week, the vacation Bible school, all the children who will be here, and no doubt there will be many here who are not saved. I pray, God, that you may allow us this week to, of course, be filled by your Spirit and uh, be used of thee to reach the children. And those who are saved, help us to be able to teach the children this week uh, what they need in their lives to be more successful Christians. So, God, would you please work with us this week? And we thank you for the responsibility and the, and the, and the opportunity we have to have Vacation Bible School. So tonight, God, would you, as we prepare for that, God, would you please speak to us now, lead us and guide us in all things. And we're going to be very careful to give you all the glory and all the praise. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, if you think about David, of course, we've preached from David many times, uh, and we realize that David, King David, wore many hats. And King David had many responsibilities. King David, of course, was a soldier. He fought uh, many battles, won many battles, and was very successful uh, as that of his role as being a soldier. Defeated, of course, Goliath. We understand all that. And the Philistines and, and every other, uh, every battle he was in, for the most part, David was a very successful soldier. He was also a singer and songwriter. We realize that most of the Psalms, not all of them, but most of them were written by David himself. He was a statesman. It was David who, of course, was able to unite northern Israel and southern Israel after many years of division there. He was a spiritual leader. He was able to lead his country uh, in the ways of God. It was, it was David's heart for God that allowed the ark to be brought back to its place where it should be uh, there in Jerusalem. David was a shepherd. As a little boy, we first read about him, he's watching sheep. Long before he goes off to battle to defeat, the, to defeat Goliath, he's watching the sheep. And of course, he protects his sheep from the bear and from the lion. David was a spouse. David was also a student of God's Word. But when we come to Psalm 71, we realize through the words he says, he's an older man now. And now he's got gray hair, like many of us do have gray hair. And David, at this point in his life, he's not looking for any more battles to fight. He's not looking for any more psalms to write, not looking for any more uh, diplomatic exercises, not looking for any more uh, sheep to shepherd. No, listen, David says this as he, ends the, as he gets near the end of his life. David says this, Lord, you have been so good to me, and you've shown me some great and mighty things, but I want to spend this part of my life reaching this generation and teaching this generation about you. Look what it says in verse 18. Oh God, forsake me not until I have Show thy strength unto this generation. He realized that, yes, King David, yes, I mean the man with the plan. I mean, it gets no higher in Israel than King David, but yet he realizes that he's got a responsibility to this generation uh, of Christians. And so I want to say to us tonight, that's what Vacation Bible School is all about. It's about you and I and our responsibility to reach and teach the children of this generation uh, how to be successful Christians. Those who are lost, we need to teach them about Jesus Christ so they can be saved. And those who are saved, we must teach them about Christ, how to live for Him and, uh, and serve Him with their life. So I want to tonight, quickly, I hope, I plan uh, to, to give us two responsibilities we have for the children of our community and of our church. Our first responsibility is the responsibility to teach them. Look over, please, in your Bible in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, please. I want to read several verses from Deuteronomy chapter 6 to remind us our responsibility to teach, uh, teach the children. Verse number 1 of Deuteronomy chapter 6 says this. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded you to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Verse 6. And these words 
which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Which words? Well, verse 1 to verse 5 of Deuteronomy chapter 6. And look in verse 7. Here's the responsibility. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Now, specifically, this is referring to the parents teaching their children the things of God, but we can use this text to realize we as Christians, as the gray-headed Christians, we have a responsibility to teach the children of our church and our, uh, and our community. It's a, it's a responsibility, can I say, that we cannot run from. It's a responsibility that you and I, we can't hide from. We can't pass it on to somebody else and say, oh, they'll learn it somewhere. No, listen, it's a responsibility that you and I ought to accept and ask God to help us do a good job. Responsibility to teach. How do we do so? Well, first of all, by exhortation. Exhortation simply means uh, to teach. And we're to teach them, we're to show them. And I think about the young boys of our church and of our community, we ought to instruct them how to live for God. Teach them how to work, teach them how to serve, teach them how to make a living, teach them how to be godly, teach them how to act like a man. And teach them how to, how to be a model citizen. Teach them how to be godly. Teach them how to be leaders. Teach them how to pray. And according to Titus chapter 2, the young ladies of our church uh, need to be instructed how to be godly ladies. How to be sober. How to love their husbands according to Titus chapter 2. How to love their children. How to be discreet. How to be chaste. How to be keepers of the home. How to be good. How to be obedient to their own husbands. But specifically... Back in Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, God gives us some specific ways we're to teach our children. First of all, we exhort them concerning God. Look in verse 4, teach them to know God. Here's what the Bible says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, in verse 4, is one Lord. God is not many gods. God is one Lord, He's Jehovah God, and we're to teach the children that, teach our children that He's holy, and that He's just, and that He's faithful, and teach the children that He is the only way to be saved. Joshua 14, 6 says this, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Think about some of the kids who will be here this week. Some of the kids who will be here, they've been taught in their life that Mary is the way to salvation. And some of them have been taught that works is the way to salvation. And some of them probably have been taught that you can't know God personally. So part of our responsibility is to teach the children that, that yes, they can know God, they can know Him personally through His Son, Jesus Christ, and He is the only way of salvation. We also teach them to love God. In verse 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And how do we do so? Well, one thing that helps is a smile on our face. Can you see Johnny Homer this week uh, dressed up in his baseball uniform walking around like this? Uh so good to have you here at Vacation Bible School. Just so excited about the things of God. <sighs> Not very exciting. Uh, you can't really look at me and see that it's important that we love God, or I'm sorry, Johnny Homer, and tell that he loves God. Or how can, how can Johnny Homer teach children the importance of loving God if he's got a, a frown on his face, if he's depressed, if he's upset? Listen, the Bible says that we're to teach the children to love God with all their mind and with all thy heart and with all thy strength. Remember the Pharisees came to Jesus and said uh, unto Jesus, Master, which is the greatest commandment? And I mean Jesus, I mean he floored them with his answer. And I can imagine they left there that day with their jaw on their chest. 
because they didn't expect Jesus Christ to say this. Here's what Jesus told them. The greatest commandment is this. Uh, he said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And can I say to us uh, this week, there's nothing more important we can teach the children than the importance of loving God. Because if we teach them how to love God, if they really love God, they'll live right. You know, you can't say, oh, I love God and, and never serve Him, or I love God and never do anything for Him. More important than teaching them how to sing or how to give or how to witness is teaching them how to love the Lord their God with all their mind and with all their heart and with all thy strength. Teach them also to fear God. In verse 13 of our text, we didn't quite get that far, but look in Deuteronomy 6, 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve Him and shalt swear, uh, and shalt swear by His name. Teach the children to fear God. I mentioned this this, week, this morning, so I won't dwell much on this, but the, the importance of teaching children to fear God. Oh, we teach them to have respect for parents, and they should, and have respect for their authorities, but nothing is as important as teaching them to fear and reverence and stand in awe of a holy God. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says this, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That tells me it's pretty important. You and I, we, uh, in our lives, we fear God, but we teach the children the importance of fearing God. Let me say what I said this morning. Uh, I believe that 99.9% .9 of the problems in our country could be solved if, if Americans feared God. Think about this. Listen, if we truly feared God as Americans, there's no way we would approve two men to get married. If we really feared God as a country, there's no way there'd be the violence on our street that there is today. If we truly feared God, there's no way we'd ever be unfaithful to our spouse. If we, if we truly feared God, there's no way our children would, uh, would be allowed to do what they're allowed to do. If we truly feared God, I'd never put a drink to my lips or dope in my veins. If I truly feared God, there's no way I would ever do anything to displease my Lord. So we've got to teach the children the importance of fearing God. The importance of serving God. We mentioned this this morning too. Remember Joshua? Told Israel, it's up to you Israel, you've got to choose. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the gods on the other side of the flood or the gods in Egypt? Or are you going to serve God? And Joshua says this, As for me and my house, we've made the decision, I've made the commitment as the Father that we're going to serve God. But think about that for just a moment. How did Joshua have the knowledge and have the desire to want to serve God with his life? He didn't just wake up one day and say, I'll declare today's Monday. I think today I'll start serving God. Or he wasn't scrolling through his Instagram and find on there that somebody else is serving God. So he doesn't say, well, I'm going to start serving God today. Listen, that's not what happened. Somebody had to teach him how to do it. By the way, somebody had to teach you how to serve God. You weren't born the first time or the second time with the ability and the desire and the know-how to serve God. Somebody had to teach you. And I say to us this week, our job, one of our responsibilities is to teach the children how to serve God. Number five, teach them to obey God. Verse 17. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and His testimonies and His statutes which He hath commanded you, uh, commanded thee, verse 18, and thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. Here's what, here's what God is saying. Obey God. Do what He tells us to do. Do what God's saying, do what I tell you to do. Uh, teach the children. We're to do that. We're to teach them to obey God. Teach them the importance of, uh, of being right with Him. And like verse 18 says, do that which is right and good in the sight of God. So we teach them concerning God. We teach them, we exhort them concerning the Word of God. 
I love the phrase, vacation Bible school. It's not vacation encyclopedia school. It's not vacation Google school. It's vacation Bible school, and it's vacation Bible school for a reason, because we're going to teach them out of this book right here. Every message that is preached, uh, I think I'm preaching Thursday of the week, is that right, Brother Marty? Uh, it's going to come from this book. All the messages are going to come from this book. All the lessons from this book. It's vacation Bible school. You say, what's the big deal about that? Why is it so important that we teach the children concerning the Word of God? Well, think about this. All the magic tricks, all the snacks, all the games, even Johnny Homer, they all come secondary to the Bible. Because it's in the Bible that we know God. It's in the Bible we know how to love God. The Bible tells us how to fear God. The Bible tells us how to serve God. And how do we know to obey God? Because it's in the Bible. Bible, vacation Bible school. We exhort them concerning the Word of God by exhortation and also, and here's the hard part. Here's where we have to get our ducks in a row because we instruct not only by exhortation, but by example. And so far, the message has been pretty easy to preach. But right now, where it's, where it's probably going to get harder to preach. Because we have a responsibility not to just talk the talk, but we have a responsibility to walk the walk. Because, you know, it's one thing to tell the children, uh, listen up, uh, serve God and fear God and, and love your Bible and smile and have a good time. But it's a total different thing for us to do that. We're to instruct them by our example. My dad used to always say this, do as I say, not as I do. And as a kid, I didn't understand what that meant. All I knew is if I didn't do what Dad said, I paid for it in the end. <laughs> and of course, our children should do what we say every time, and when they don't, they should get punished every time. But, uh, but listen, we ought to do exactly what God tells us, and so we ought to be an example to our children. Uh, listen, because it's one thing to tell them about God. It's another thing for us to show them about God. It's one thing to tell them to love God. It's another thing for you and I to love God and let them see us. It's one thing to tell them to fear God. It's another thing for us to fear God and show them how. It's one thing to tell them to serve God. It's another thing when they see us serving God. It's one thing to tell them to obey God, but it's a completely another thing for them to see us obeying God because we instruct the children by exhorting them and by being an example to them. So we have a responsibility to teach. Number two, we have a responsibility to reach them. Look over in Proverbs chapter 13. This is kind of a, a, a peculiar verse for a message like this, but look please in, in Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13, verse 22. The Bible says this, a good man, that's woman, uh, a good person, Christian, leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of a, of a sinner is laid up for the just. I, I thought about this. You know, only heaven and eternity is really going to tell what good we've done for our children. But you and I have a responsibility to reach them while there is still time. And I thought about this. I think I mentioned this to Brother Marty this morning or sometime here recently, that most of the kids who come to Vacation Bible School come here all the time, been coming for a while now, and they'll keep coming for a while now. But there's going to be some here who we only have for four days. 
And so you and I got to realize the responsibility we have to reach them. And so we must take the time and opportunity to do all that we can to reach them. Back to Proverbs 13, 22. It talks about how a good man or a good woman will leave an inheritance to their children. And I think about the word inheritance. We often think about an inheritance. We think about uh, somebody in our family dying and leaving us just all kind of money. And we're going to be able to lay on our beds and throw the dollar bills up in the air. And we're going to be able to, uh, to use dollar bills to light our fireplace, like we're going to be just rich and wealthy and loaded with all the money that our grandparents are going to leave us. And I don't think that's what Solomon has in mind. However, Solomon was a very, very rich man, and I'm sure he left behind bukus, that's a lot, uh, of money to his children and his grandchildren. But I believe uh, Solomon's talking about here more than just a material or more than just a financial inheritance. He's talking about a spiritual inheritance. And let me give you real quickly just a couple of the, uh, of the, of the inheritances we ought to leave as we get ready for vacation Bible school. We should leave the children an inheritance of truth. Jesus said this, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And by the way, contrary to modern theology, and contrary to normal thinking in society, there is an absolute truth. And the absolute truth is found right here in the Bible. And we're not going to share this week our opinion. We're not going to share this week our ideas or our thoughts. We're going to share this week from the truth of the Word of God. And this is the only truth that's going to set these children free. Uh, there is an absolute truth. And you and I, as the grown-ups in this conversation, you and I should be willing to do all that we can to stand for this truth and fight for this truth and fight against the things of the world and fight for the things of God and stand up for our faith and what we believe in. And listen, because the next generation is depending on us to do so. Amen. Leave an inheritance of truth. We can't water down the truth. We can't lower our standards. We can't, oh, we sure can't change our doctrine. We can't compromise our convictions. We can't, uh, uh, we can't change how we feel or how we believe. No, listen, we've got a responsibility to the children of our church and to those in our community to leave them an inheritance of truth and also an inheritance of a testimony. Our kids need to be proud to be called a Christian. And know that it's okay to live for God. And know that it's right to have convictions. And they need to know the importance and understanding of being faithful to God. And the young girls need to know it's okay to act and dress like a lady. And the young boys need to know it's okay to look and act like a man. And our kids need to know that it's okay to serve God. It's okay to pray. It's okay to win souls. It's okay to love Jesus. And where are they going to get it from? Not from school. Not from the internet not from uh, Instagram or Facebook, not at all. They're going to get it from you and I. They're going to see us, and they're going to watch us, and the question tonight is this, what are we going to leave them? I probably have said this many times, but I would love to be able to leave my kids a lot of money like Bill Gates is going to be able to. Heard the other day that Bill Gates earns 500 bucks a second in interest on his wealth. And I'd like to be able to leave my kids a big, uh, a, a lot of property like Donald Trump will be able to. And I'd like to leave, be able to leave my kids a famous name like Kennedy or something like that. But my kids and your kids and the kids of this church and the, and the kids of our community, they're going to be much better off if you and I leave them an inheritance of truth and an inheritance of a testimony. Because, listen, all the money in the world will do them no good if they don't know God. And all the property in the world will do them no good if they don't know God. And all the, and all the, uh, the fame and all the power and the best name in the world will do them no good if they don't know God. And and it's our responsibility to teach them and show them like the Apostle John said in 3 John chapter 1, verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in truth. And it's our responsibility. They won't pick it up on their own. 
They won't, uh, they won't get it anywhere else. They'll get it from us. And you know, we all have dreams for our children. We all have things that we want them to do. And, and I thought, you know, it'd be great for the young folks of our church to be successful, productive citizens. And I think we ought to pray for that. And I think it'd be great for the young people of our church to, to be rich and famous and powerful and rich again and tithe to our local church. And it'd be great to see the young people of our church make an impact on our country politically. That'd be wonderful. But listen, it'd be far greater to see the youth in our church walk with God and serve God, and fear God, and follow God, and raise their children to do the same. You say, how, how's that going to happen? Well, our responsibility to teach them, and to show them. An inheritance of truth, an inheritance of a testimony. So now we could say, well, you know, preacher, you're right. But kids nowadays, they're just different. And yes, they are. They're way different than even when I was a kid uh, 30 years ago. Wow, I was 12 years old 30 years ago. Goodness gracious, I made it through the 80s and through the 90s and through the 2000s, all as, as a grown-up. A long time ago I was a kid. Kids are way different now than they were when I was a kid. And they're way different than when you were a kid. But you know what hadn't changed? The Bible. God hadn't changed. God's Word hadn't changed. So what do we do? Well, you know, we could say, kids are different. We could say, well, you know, nobody showed me. Bless God. I learned how to serve God all by myself. I learned how to fear God all by myself. Nobody had to show me anything in the Bible. I learned it all by myself. Well, bless your heart. You are a rarity. Or we could say this. You know, this week... I'm going to do all that I can to live for God. So as a child sees me, they'll say, Sir, ma'am, you're different. What makes you different? Then you can say, Well, little boy, little girl, I love God. And I want to serve God. And I fear God. And I'm saved. I love Jesus. Can I tell you about Jesus? We can all do our part to help reach and teach the children. It's our responsibility. To some of the kids, it all begins, their future begins this week. I think about some of the kids who will be here. There'll be, there'll be some here who maybe have never been in church in their life, have never one time heard the word Jesus, or the word salvation, or the word heaven, and there may be some who have never at all one time heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine in America where, where there's all kind of avenues to get the gospel out there? There may be some this week who have never heard about sin, have never heard that their sin will send them to hell, and they must be saved. So this week, somebody, listen, somebody's future could be changed for all of eternity this week as they hear the gospel. So will you pray? Will you work? Will you give? Will you help? Will you do your part to reach and teach this generation for the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you please stand to your feet? I wonder tonight, you know, a message like this, I really don't know how to do invitation. I'm just going to open the altars and say tonight, maybe you need to come to the altar and simply pray. And pray something like this, Lord, would you help me to be right with God so I can help somebody else be right with God? And I thought tonight, maybe some of the workers of VBS want to come to the altar and pray and say, God, this week would you use me? Would you empty me of myself and fill me with your Holy Spirit so I may be a blessing this week? I may be able this week to reach, if you could just reach one child this week with the gospel, then it's been a successful week. So maybe some of our workers need to come to the altar and pray and say, God, this week, would you help me? Would you use me? Maybe there's somebody here tonight and you're not sure you're saved. You, you know, you, you've heard the gospel, you've heard about heaven and hell, you've heard about Jesus and the blood, and, and maybe you've never made that decision, your personal decision to trust Christ to be your Savior. Well, the altar's open for you as well. 
But tonight, however, however God has spoken to you, I invite you to come to the altar here as we begin to pray, as the music plays, as we pray. If you need to come, you come. Okay, let's pray. Father.